All right, good morning, here we go again. This is uh, stage 10, and it's also the last stage before the first rest day. And actually this image kind of deals with that. So the rest day is after uh, the first 10 days of racing. Tomorrow the riders will get a day off. Of course, there's always this conversation about uh, the fact that they really can't, if they were to truly take a day off, not get on their bikes or anything, their legs would be cement the following day. Frequently, the tour will have a rough, like, climbing day, the day after the tour, after the rest day, rather, excuse me, and... Um, it can really be a question of who handled their rest day well and was ready to race the next day. It's been a disaster at times for the guys who didn't get properly prepared and their legs kind of fold up on the climb. And you know, you may not win the day after, win the tour the day after a rest day, but you can lose it. So this is uh, a long flat stage. Today's actually, I believe, the longest stage, 217 kilometers. They've been racing for, like I say, 10 days, so they're pretty beat. <laughs> and uh, this painting is a little bit dealing with that. So the uh, there's a breakaway up the road, but it's a sprinter's day. and. These two riders, one I'm working on now, Maxime Montford, is a little perturbed with Magnus Gort, who had gone to the front for about 50 feet and then swung off the back. And Maxime was kind of like, well, look, if you're going to go to the front, why don't you do something? <laughs> you know, what was that? Either get up here and do a real pool or get out of here. Because, <laughs> you know, we got a job to do. Lavis Vidal does have a sprinter in Caleb Ewan. He has had two second places, so Maxime is keeping the breakaway honest and doing a lot of work. And he's been doing that for a lot of stages. And he's eh, a little testy. Can't blame him. I'm pretty tired myself from this endeavor, and I'm not riding the bike. I'm just making paintings. In the mix of this leading group is one of the riders from De Kooning Quick Step. And they have sort of the double function to be on the front today. Their spinner, Ilian Viviani, who does have one stage. needs to keep the break honest. But in addition, they have the yellow jersey and it's sort of tradition, expectation that if you hold the yellow jersey, you're on the front riding tempo. And we'll call this a little testy. Now normally I'll flip this over on the back and label everything so everybody knows who's who and what's what, myself included, because these paintings are for sale and a lot of times people are buying the right, them based on their favorite riders, their favorite teams. So I do get it all labeled and then share that on my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com and every one of those posts does have a link through to my website, gregleach.com, where you can purchase the paintings of your choice. And they're only um, $75 a piece, plus shipping. So, come on, it's not a be better deal in the cycling paraphernalia collecting to be had, right? So, again, always laying... Oh, I see a guardrail got missed. My voice has changed because I tend to put 
toothbrushes in my mouth. There, back to normal. So I'm mixing up the flesh tones now. Again, always working light to dark, warm to cool. So now, of course, I am working on this supposition that this is what they're griping about. I'm not alone in that supposition. The um, I watch NBC, the uh, NBC Sports Network. By the way, they've been very gracious and have commented on my artwork during the course of the race. Very exciting. Been sharing some of the time lapse on the. Uh, during the broadcast, again, very exciting. So, laying in the flesh tones. But, oh, that's what I was saying. So, the, um, that was the interpretation of former racer Bob Roll, one of the early Americans to race the tour. It wasn't until Greg Lamont won the tour. That Americans, and even he had quite a bit of trouble. The Europeans that didn't exactly welcome the uh, American riders with open arms or even the non Europeans. It's taken a while for the sport to become as international as it is. With yesterday being only the second time an African had ever won a stage of the tour. That same African, Daryl Empey from South Africa, was the first African to ever wear the yellow jersey, which he did back in 2013. So Magnus Court rides for Astana. Astana is a trade team. It was actually originally created by the country of Astana for a famous rider who couldn't get a team. Uh, he couldn't get a team because he'd been banded for doping and nobody would pick him up. Um, yeah, he served his time and been a Kurov. He was a contemporary of Lance Armstrong. So people who wring their hands about Armstrong have to remember that what he was doing was sort of modus operandi for the tour at the time. I really do honestly believe that the tour race is much, much cleaner. And in addition to that, does a much better job of policing its own, making sure that everybody's racing clean. So, again, warm to cool, so laying in the uh, blues now. Don't know who the Takuni rider is. And so trying to distinguish these two blues. So we've got a, this is a lot of cerulean. And then the other, this blue is more um, phthalo. Um, these watercolors are Fabulous, first off, beautiful, wonderful color. They're made by an American, or at least sold by an American cycling company, uh, cycling, watercolor, art supply company, Richson Art. You can find them at richsonart.com, R-I-C-H-E-S-O-N.com, A-R-T.com. Um, these are cake watercolors, which usually are not anywhere near as bold as the two watercolors because one you have to put so much water in them to get them to dilute and these have such a 
high intensity of color, which is why I love them. Clearly, I love color. It's actually how I got painting, bike racing, from the story. First off, it was my wife's idea. All of my good ideas are hers. But I was watching the Tour de France, and clearly by doing these kinds of things, it's easy to understand. I'm a bit of a workaholic. Sometimes refer to having a Calvinist upbringing. I didn't. But it's that uh, the value of work attitude. So I was watching the Tour de France and enjoying it and you know loving it, but it meant I was sitting on the couch watching TV during the day and it just didn't feel right to me. And my wife, had Bridget Gethins, who's an actor, you can find her on IMDb, um, made the brilliant suggestion. Well, why don't you? paint the tour and then try to sell the work on Facebook was the initial idea and it was her idea to use Twitter to start the blog all of that produced two books of my cycling that was initially her idea to crowdfund a book all of it so but I love all of my artwork, and you'll see that if you go to gregreach.com, is about color. So these watercolors really enable me to keep that intensity of color that I like. And that also made it a logical thing to paint the tour. Again, if you look at the website, you'll see I love to paint the figure in motion. I love color. I think that's what motivates my art making. So it was without my realizing it, it took her to point it out, painting cycling was a natural outgrowth of that existing passion. Add to that that I am, I raced amateur as a kid, and so I have a knowledge and love of the sport, the competitive part of it, and then while I don't race anymore, I still ride quite frequently love being out on a bike you know people always know well do you get your exercise and of course I do but somehow I don't consider riding the bike to be exercise I honestly consider it my reward for getting all my work done <laughs> you know when you're a kid, once you got all your chores, chores, you could go out and play. And I see going out and riding as getting all my chores done, so I now I can go out and play. And this year, because my chores have involved working on my house, I haven't gotten to go out and play as much. It's all right. The other thing about cycling, you truly do never forget how to ride a bike. It's just a question of how fast you still are, how far you can go. So when I get back on the, on the bike again, once the house is to its next point of doneness, I'll be out riding. It's the old saying, it's even for racers, it never gets easier riding, you just get faster. And I'm not trying to be fast anymore. I've got no intention of racing. The last time I raced, and ah, it's 40 years ago now, I had a pretty spectacular crash and I kind of went, you know what, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with this. I tell people, I was a better painter even then than I was a racer. And you have to fall down and take off a lot of skin when you're in the studio painting. 
You can catch yourself pretty bad, depending on what you're doing. But you're not going to get any road rash. This is just about finished. Again, I hope you'll like, if you like what you see, you'll credit it with a like. You'll let your friends know about it. And we strongly encourage you to subscribe. That way you'll know every time I'm paint another race or and I do and if you look through some of the videos you'll see I share some of my other work my other techniques as well so just laying in the roadway right now there you go so please give it a like subscribe if I get en enough subscribers here shortly I will uh, finally be able to title the page dearly like to be able to love to do <laughs> dearly like whatever I would uh, love to do that and so we would truly appreciate your help in just that I think we need a little bit of uh, mouth from the guy talking here there okie doke thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll check back tomorrow's a rest day so there'll be no paintings tomorrow